He says, Psychiatry has simply renamed more and more of our natural and normal human experience as indicating a psychiatric disorder and requiring a psychiatric drug. So around April this year, I became like really sceptical about the mental health industry. And I've always been sceptical about it, I've always been aware of it, and, but I never really looked into it. And April this year, something that really triggered me, I was just like, well, I've got to look into this for, something's not right here. And I've, I've never been a believer in mental health or mental illness. And what I mean by that is, I'm somebody who takes ownership of their life. I believe in personal responsibility. I believe that I am responsible for the way that I think and feel and react and respond to my environment, to life. That's something within my control. It's an option that I have. It doesn't mean that I'm perfect or that I get it right every single time, but I have the option to do that within myself. And everything else outside of me is either within my influence or it's out of my control. And what I've never liked about the mental illness industry is it strips the individual, it strips you of any personal responsibility, any personal power. It disempowers you. It says, there's nothing that you can do. This is who you are. You were born this way. Or it was being passed down to you by somebody else. It's completely outside of your control. And I don't agree with that. Now, in April this year, I was scrolling through Instagram on the rare occasion that I do. And I saw a post which said, six symptoms of ADHD or something like that. And I am started scrolling through the symptoms. And I noticed that I thought, well, hang on a second. I do these. Like, this, is, this is something that I do. And then I saw another post which was very similar, symptoms of ADHD. But I noticed that they weren't the opposite. They weren't different, but they were conflicting symptoms. And I also saw myself resonating with these symptoms as well. And one of the symptoms was an ADHD person doesn't like doing what they don't want to do. They like to do what they want to do. And I thought, well, <laughs> that's not a symptom. That's, that's everybody. Everybody loves doing that. Who the hell loves doing something that they don't want to do? Surely that's everybody, right? Like nobody enjoys doing the things that they don't want to do, but we've got to do them. It's simple as that. As more time went on, I started to notice that my, my Instagram feed was being inundated with ADHD posts. Posts about day in the life of an ADHD person, how to spot an ADHD person, how an ADHD person might react in a certain situation, or, or how to tell if you're ADHD. Just all these silly posts, you know? And they're all dressed up in like really fancy fonts and they made it, made it look really like fun and inviting and there's lots of videos and people sort of posting about it and it's almost like an online community of ADHD people. And I started thinking, well, is it possible that these, this whole sort of narrative, this whole, these, all these ideas have been created by, say, an industry? And that industry has published it on social media because we're all like this. So we're all looking, we're all singing from the same hymn sheets, right? And it's constantly, all the time, it's repetition over and over again, the constant consumption of the information. Is it possible they've posted it on social media knowing we're all going to look at it, knowing we're all going to resonate with it, so that we're, we start to identify with this label, we start to identify with different labels, mental illnesses. Is that a possibility? Because everything that I'm reading online about mental illness, it just seems to be that these, these are our natural human characteristics. And I started thinking, well, is it possible then that what they've done is taken normal human characteristics and behaviors and reactions, responses to life, group them together in different ways, created a new label for each one, a mental illness, and pushed it onto social media. So we, we start to resonate with it. This then increases diagnoses, increases self-diagnosis. We all just start to say that, oh, I've got this condition, I've got this mental health issue. And then drug consumption goes through the roof. Is that possible? According to the national statistics, one in four of us will suffer from a mental health disorder in any given year. 56% of employees in the UK are experiencing mild symptoms of depression. And I'm a little confused why they use the word employee. Like, it's you're a person, a human being. 56% of people in the UK are depressed, according to this. 
in the 1950s, there were 100 mental illnesses. Today, there's almost 400. Now, I don't know about you, but if half of the population are classed as depressed, either that's completely false or there's something terribly wrong within our society that we need to address that we're not addressing. And it turns out there are two people, one of them who I've interviewed on this channel, and I strongly encourage you to go and check it out. I'll link it below. Robert Whittaker, he's an investigative journalist, an investigative medical journalist. He's doing fantastic work at uncovering all the nonsense around big pharma and psychiatry and mental illness. And then around summertime this year, I come across a video online. It was called Big Pharma and Psychiatry Exposed. It was by Dr. James Davis. I'll link it below. This guy's a PhD in psychiatry and anthropology, and he's a researcher at the Roehampton University in London. And it turns out that he has proven the very theory that I had just mentioned. Psychiatry and mental illness have rebranded, or rather taken our normal human characteristics and behaviors, rebranded them as mental illness, so as to prescribe more drugs. He says, psychiatry has simply renamed more and more of our natural and normal human experience as indicating a psychiatric disorder and requiring a psychiatric drug. By reclassifying painful normality as psychiatric abnormality, we have created the illusion of a psychiatric epidemic. In other words, society has been convinced that they have a mental illness. When in actual fact, you don't. No mental illnesses, apart from a handful, are backed by scientific evidence.